Hi guys, it's Simulsi here. So welcome to another speed build. So today I am building here in Willow Creek and this time I am building, I think I'm going to call it the Willow Creek Manor because I am that creative at naming my builds, but I love this house so much and I have been very excited to share it with you guys. As soon as I finished this neighborhood, I was so excited to take pictures because this is the last house that I had to do in this part of Willow Creek and I was just so excited to see what all of the houses looked like together and I shared some screenshots on both my Twitter and my Instagram so if you guys did see those uh yeah hopefully you did enjoy them but I just absolutely am in love with this neighborhood in case you don't know exactly where we are in Willow Creek we are right next door to the Goss house so this is the lot that's to the right of the Goss home, you can see the Goss house that I renovated to the left. Across the street was um, originally another manor. I think that's what the Sims team called it, but it was originally a residential lot. I turned it into a fancy restaurant because I thought that lot was perfect to have a restaurant on because there's this community garden in the back. And so I figured whoever owns the restaurant also owns that garden and then they can get the fresh produce right there to have it in the restaurant to cook with. And I thought that was kind of like a really fancy thing. And I just yeah, love that build. And then the other house, you may say, you may see it as we're like flying around here building, but that one was actually a collab that I did with Peach Plays. I built the exterior and then she did the interior. And I actually really loved that house. And I decided to go ahead and furnish it myself. I did it off camera though, instead of making a video of it, but I will share it as part of my tour of Willow Creek. I think I will anyways, because I really like the household um, that's living there. The household is so cool. It's this um, single woman who lives there and she is a famous uh, pianist and she lives in this big fancy house all by herself. Well, until recently she has lived by herself. Um, her two um, niece and nephew have just moved in and her niece is a teenager and she's kind of rebellious. She's really angry. I haven't figured out exactly why they had to move in with their aunt. Not sure what happened to their parents. Um, let me know if you guys have any ideas. But yeah, so her and her little brother have moved in with their aunt and her aunt now has to deal with having a teenager and a child in her house where she is used to, you know, just being herself. She's famous. She is um, always working at jazz clubs, I imagined, and I just, love that house so much. I loved creating those Sims. And then of course the, the goth household is right next door to this one and they are still the goth family. I did renovate their house. Um, some of you guys may have seen that build. It is on my renovating EA playlist if you guys would like to watch it. And I love that family so much. I love the what I love what I did with their house. I know a lot of people weren't very happy that I didn't keep with the whole gothic like um, aesthetic that they originally had, but I honestly really like what I did with that house. So I am totally okay if some people don't agree with the changes that I made, but I actually modeled this house quite a lot um, like after the renovation that I did. I looked at the goth house a lot, trying to figure out the shape of this build and also the build that was here originally. I took a little bit of inspiration from that one because it had kind of a similar shape. I mean, not really. It kind of started out a little bit more similar and ended up being something completely different. But this house, I just completely um, made up from that previous house and then looking at the renovation I did of the Goss house. And I actually really just love the entire shape of this build. I think it's so unique and I think it fits into this neighborhood perfectly. And now that this neighborhood is finished, I am just so obsessed. It's one of my most favorite places in my entire save and I cannot wait to yeah, finish this entire world. I only have three more lots actually to finish in Willow Creek. I do have the park. I attempted to renovate the park, like I think like a month ago, and I was liking what I was doing, but I got kind of stuck and got a little bit frustrated. So I still have the footage of what I did before. I don't think I saved the lot, but I can look back and see kind of what I was doing and hopefully come up with something that I really like because yeah, I, I actually really like the park. So I wanna keep the existing bathroom building. I'm thinking about including a cafe on the lot. I don't know if that's something I should do or just have some food stalls. I, I want another activity besides just like a park and fishing. So we'll see exactly what I come up with, but let me know if you guys have any ideas for that. And then I still have the, um, 
is it three lots or is it two after this? <gasps> Oh yeah, no, it's three. Okay, I have the 50 by 50 lot over by the Spencer Kim Lewis family. I have to build a house there. I wanna do a big, you know, Southern manor, very similar to what I did for the Spencer Kim Lewis family. And then for the last lot, that is the museum. And as you guys probably know, you have heard me ask you guys for ideas for that lot quite a bit. I really like the idea of making it a restaurant, but I don't know if it would be too similar to the restaurant I have here across the street. I'm not exactly sure how I would want it to look because I've been very stuck on the idea of having it be a wedding venue. And since we don't actually have wedding venues in the game, I wanna do another useful lot type that you know you would still want your Sims to visit when they're not getting married. So that's been kind of my struggle. Um, so again, if you guys have any ideas on that lot, definitely let me know. I can keep it a museum, but I just don't feel like museums are really that interesting in game. And I will have a couple of museums, but I feel like they can get a bit repetitive. You really only need maybe two in the entire game. And I, I don't even know if you need two, maybe just one. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to finish this world. I love it. I think this world is so pretty. Even before I did all of my own builds and my renovations in this world, I think it's just one of, it's just a really pretty atmosphere. I love all of the like landscaping and natural bodies of water in this world. I think it's just so beautiful. And now that I've added my own spin on it, I am just so in love with it. And can't wait to finish it and share with you guys. But anyways, I have basically rambled on um, about this world throughout the entire building of this house. But as you can see, it has basically came together. Now I'm just working out the pathways. This was so frustrating. So I spent all of this time on the terrain paint, especially when I start doing the landscaping and or, or with the you know plants and everything. When I left my game and came back to it another time, all of my terrain paint had disappeared and I was so frustrated. So you will notice when we get onto the interior, it has no terrain paint for a while. Then I just go back in and I completely repaint everything. And thankfully, the next time I went into my game, it was all still there. I have no idea why that happens sometimes, but it's so frustrating, especially on a big lot like this where it's all terrain paint for all of the pathways and everything. It's very... It's very annoying, but thankfully um, I was able to replace it all and I think it looks more or less basically the same. I mean, I didn't like look back at the footage and try to make it identical because of course it's just pathways, but yeah. I think it looks all right in the end. Here I was going to put this archway leading out to the back and I leave it open, but I decided I didn't really like that archway. And you will see I'm trying to use so many of the new plants that we got with the Island Living Pack. And I think they do look pretty here, but since I didn't use them in the previous builds and you don't really see them in the surrounding areas very much or you know anything that's similar to them, I decided to not include them, but you will see me try to use them quite a bit. I think probably in builds in the, like the future that aren't for my save file in this world, I will probably use a few of those plants. But for now, I will just keep them to the base game plans or mostly base game that look really nice in this world and I just absolutely love it and unfortunately um, this build was getting kind of long and I felt like the landscaping was a little bit repetitive so I did cut some of it out hopefully you guys don't mind too much but I just felt like it was a little bit kind of repetitive basically. So I cut out just a little bit of the landscaping but everything is basically the same. I use the same plants over and over and I do think I show quite a bit of a majority of it. So you will see that all come together. And you may have noticed I changed the color of the house. I started out with this cream color. I thought that would be really pretty, but then I didn't feel like there was enough contrast between the white windows. And then once I switched the windows to the green color, especially in this, where I have the dining room right here on this side of the house, um, I was just like, okay, let's go with a green theme. So on the interior, there's a little bit of green. I try to not make it too overpowering. I mostly used brown and like cream colors and some whites and yeah, some greens as like an accent color, but definitely on the exterior, I thought this green siding looked so pretty and I loved this pink tree here in the front. It's very, um, it's kind of mimicked off of what you see in the surrounding. You see some of these pink trees. I believe it's a cherry blossom tree. I'm not exactly sure though, but you see them throughout the world. And I thought it just looked so nice here and just added kind of like this pop of color right here in the front of the build. So I really enjoyed that. And over here I do get a little bench and a seating area that I thought was kind of nice. 
and I just love the entire exterior of the build and I'm so happy that it came together so easily and that the floor plan came together pretty quickly too. Like everything just seemed to work really nicely and yeah, very, very happy with the way this build turned out. But I think you guys probably see that. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about the family that I imagined living here. So you will see that I decorate it with a master bedroom, a kid's room that has two beds in it, and then a room that I imagined was for a teenager. That's what I was thinking anyways. And I was thinking for my save file. So let me know if you guys like this idea, if I actually don't have anybody living in this house. And instead I go through and put up like a bunch of cobwebs and create kind of a creepy story that the family doesn't actually live here anymore. I could possibly upload it to the gallery with cobwebs in it. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. But I wanted to create something that was fully furnished. You guys could play in and didn't have to worry about decorating and you could choose to if you wanted to. And I didn't want to completely trash it either. So what I'm thinking for my save file is I will just go through. I will leave the furniture as is. I might make a few things like askew, like they've been somebody's left in a hurry. But I don't want anybody to live here and I kind of want there to be a mystery as to why the family doesn't live here anymore. And then you guys could kind of play along with that story and then have to come in here and clean up this old house and it's just creepy and maybe it's haunted or maybe it's cursed. I think I'm going to give it the haunted trait. I don't know, let me know if you guys like that idea. I think it sounds kind of fun and kind of creepy as well, but I've had a lot of you guys ask for some, you know, empty houses or not empty houses, but larger, nicer houses for your more wealthier sims to move into that nobody else lives in. So you don't have to move any of my pre-made sims out in my save file. You could just move your sims in and not have to worry about finding a place or deleting my sims or something like that. So this was one that I was thinking about it and I have some ideas for maybe one or two more in the rest of my save file too. So let me know what you guys are thinking about that, but I thought this was kind of a fun way to give you guys a fully furnished house with explaining why, why this house is completely empty of Sims, but is still fully furnished. Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you guys do like that. But as you can see, I am on to the interior now. I did decide to start off by decorating the kitchen. I really like this kitchen. I think it's a really cool shape. I love where I placed the island. I put a few decorations on the counters, but it's not overly decorated. I did want this house to be pretty tidy, even though I did just talk about like going through and covering it with cobwebs, but I still wanted it to be kind of tidy. And you will also probably notice that I didn't show you guys any of the wallpaper and flooring. I don't know what happened to that footage. I thought I recorded it because I also put in a basement at the same time as doing that. So you will notice that we have a basement in this build um, and I will furnish it. It's just a laundry room and a wine cellar, but yeah, I don't know what happened. I went, I like was going through and editing all the footage. I went back through my old files. I couldn't find it. So I do apologize. That wasn't something that I was planning on cutting out of the build and not something I normally cut out, but it happened this time. Over here is the formal dining room. And I love this room so much. When I was building it on the exterior, I was kind of thinking it was going to be like a sunroom, like a sitting room with maybe the piano, but the room across the hallway actually ends up being that room that I imagined. And I'm really happy that this ended up being the dining room. I think it's so pretty. The thing I struggled with the most in here though was picking out curtains. So I have these ones up right now and I think they kind of look cool, but I switched them out for a different one and I'm not totally sold on which curtains I should have used but I just love this room so much. I end up getting the Globe wine bar. I have a china hutch over here and I use a lot of these like classic paintings that we have in game, classic furniture. I wanted this place to feel very traditional and very fancy and I love it. And I think it complements the other houses in this neighborhood as well because the Goss house is decorated very similar to this and I wanted them to feel very cohesive to one another, especially architecturally. I wanted them to look like they were built maybe at the same time. And then I think the restaurant across the street is, is a different color scheme. It's more of a light color scheme with like blues and whites and grays, but I still feel like it has this same sort of fancier kind of classic traditional feel to it. And then the pianist house, her house, I used a lot more vintage glamor and a lot more black and grays and blues, I think. Her house is really nice too. I think she has such a fun style. Very excited to share that family with you guys. But um, yeah, I'm just really happy with how this neighborhood came together and they're all very similar, but still very different is basically my point. So this is the downstairs bathroom. I do end up getting a shower and tub combo in here. I use the one that came from Vampires. 
I loved using the vampire stuff in here. I didn't use it like a whole lot, kind of similar to what I did in the goth house. I just wanted to use it as a little bit of an accent and kind of give that gothic feel without making everything gothic, which like I mentioned, I know a lot of you guys did want with the goth house and maybe I will revisit the gothic house in, or the goth house in the future and do a more gothic style. But for now, I love what I did and I'm, Happy with bringing in a little bit of that um, furniture that came with vampire stuff in this build. And I thought this white and gold was so pretty in here. I thought it worked with the tile really nicely. And then of course that rug that I used in there also came with that pack too. So that all came together pretty well, I think. Here is a hallway. I just put a few pictures up on the wall. This door right here leads down into the basement. I did actually delete the underneath of the stairs. And for this build, it worked out pretty nicely. I have mentioned a few different times how I don't really like deleting the wall underneath the staircase because I don't like that gap that it creates. There's not really a nice way of filling it in, but for this build, I really wanted to have a basement and I felt like that was the best way to do it. So you will see I have a wall kind of blocking the staircase. I wanted to have it be a little bit more open, but I think it works out nicely this way. And here is the entryway and main living area of the build. So this is their more casual living area. There's a TV in here. I decided to use this smaller TV. I didn't really feel like this was very, like the type of home to have like a big modern TV. I just didn't really feel like that was very appropriate. And here, something I didn't notice until after editing this and after taking the screenshots, I did not make these side tables match in color. And it's so annoying to me now after watching it back. So I will change it before I upload it to the gallery. So I'm not sure if I will go through and retake the pictures for the screenshots, but in the gallery, all of the wood will match in here. It would have been fine if it was more of a mismatchy, I think, decorating style, but I was going for a very matchy style in here. So I will change the color to actually match the um, coffee table and then both the TV stand too. Oh, the TV stand, I forgot, I got rid of it and I put a fireplace in here instead. I was really wanting to include a fireplace somewhere in the living room. And since I switched out these windows, it actually kind of fits here pretty nicely. I mean, it kind of blocks the windows just a little bit, but not enough for me to not include the fireplace. So I was really happy about that because at this point I was only going to include a fireplace in the dining room and then in the master bedroom. And I was kind of okay with that, but yeah, I feel like with an old house like this, it needs a lot of fireplaces. Do any of you guys feel that way? I feel like it's just so appropriate. But over here I have this uh, bookcase cabinet with one of those chairs that came from vampire stuff I used that chair a few different times in this build and I loved using it in the green color because I felt like it mimicked the exterior colors and the little hints of green I was trying to use in here but as you can see it is mostly brown and cream I tried to not overdo it with the green the chairs in the dining room have the green cushions and I felt like that was just enough because I really didn't want to overdo it. Um, but in here, I want this to feel more like a library. So I used these very thin bookcases and lined them along this wall. And there I was thinking about getting rid of the archway and use a regular door, but I didn't find one that I liked. But yeah, I wanted it to feel more like a library. They are overlapping a little bit and they don't look perfect. I really hope that we get like a single tile version of this bookcase. I've seen a CC version of it and it would be so nice because you could actually create a library space in basically any spot that you needed to. If they were only a single tile wide, you could fit them wherever. So that would be really cool. And also if they came in a few different swatches where the wood tones matched, but the shelves switched up a little bit. So, you know, it could be the same items, but if they just moved shelves, does that make sense? So it doesn't look so repetitive. Either way, I think it looks really nice. And then I have a seating table or a seating area in here with the coffee table and the lemonade pitcher on top of it. The lemonade pitcher is a little bit more modern, I think, than I wanted it to look. We do have that tea set that's just a decoration, but I wanted this one to be functional. So I go I went ahead and used that one, and then I have the piano in there too, as well as a chess table. I get another chess table on one of the balconies too. So I thought that was a nice activity for your sims to do in this type of build. And then down here you can see I have the laundry room, I get a litter box down here, and I do put a food bowl in the kitchen at the very end of the video. I think I forgot at this point. Yeah, pretty sure it's at the end of the video. And then over here, I wanted to create this kind of pantry wine cellar thing. So I have these two wine racks, and I try using a few different items along this wall, but I just went ahead and added more wine racks. I wish your Sims could actually use these as functioning things to get like drinks out of. They're nice as decoration though, and I haven't done many 
wine cellars. It's not a very elaborate or fancy one, but I feel like it still serves its purpose and it looks nice, I think anyway, so hopefully you guys will like it too. But up here is the shared bathroom upstairs. There are three ones, there's two en suites. The, um, the teenager's bedroom has an en suite and then the master bedroom has a huge en suite with this walk-in closet area. I thought that was so cool. So this is more a bathroom for the twins. Um, if, you, if of course you wanna play with that same number of Sims in this build, you can always switch up the bedrooms and use, you know, have two teenagers or two kids rooms, toddler rooms, or have a bunch of adults living here, whatever you would like to do. But that's just how I decided to decorate it. But like I said, I don't think I'm going to have any Sims in my save file, but very interested to hear what you guys think about that idea. Cause I don't know if that's something you guys are going to be interested in, but I think it sounds kind of cool. Um, but up here in the hallway, I just have a few decorations. I have this side table over here with some flowers, a lamp, and then I decided to use that steamboat. I've used it a couple of times here in Willow Creek cause I thought it was kind of kind of appropriate I think for this neighborhood. But over here is the master bedroom. This bedroom I think is so cool. It's one of my favorite master bedrooms that I've done in a while. It's, it's a huge room so that's always nice when doing a master bedroom because then you can fit in like a vanity table, you can fit in a wardrobe and like everything that you need. But if you notice to the right of the screen, there's that decoration with that necklace on display. I've never read the description of it, so I'm not exactly sure what that necklace is supposed to mean or or if it, I don't, I don't know what that thing's all about, but I thought it was really nice in here because I imagined it was a really like priceless piece of jewelry and I really liked it including it in there and that's where I do the walk-in closet and I end up using those wardrobes that we got with Get Famous and I love them so much. I think they're so pretty, but I really wish we would have got something that was more traditional looking. I think the color swatch that I ended up using was, I think nice, but the, the clothing inside of it is so sparkly and there's like all of these animal prints and they're a little bit crazy looking. So I wish we would have got a couple of swatches that were maybe just like a solid wood frame with some clothes that look similar to the open clothing rack that we have in game. Either way, I love these ones, especially the shoe one. I feel like that was something we really needed. So I used it in here. I was thinking about using this stool that your Sims can stand on to try on different clothes. I'm not exactly sure how it works, so I'll try not to describe it because I'll probably get it wrong, but I decided not to include it and I put the necklace back in there and I have a mirror and I just think it ends up being a really cool kind of walk-in wardrobe on your way to the master bathroom. And I think it's very different to anything that I've done before. I mean, I've done a few walk-in closets but I don't think I've ever done any one that's looked quite like that. And I'm so happy with the way it turned out. But over here is the master bathroom. It's very similar to the rest of the bathrooms in this build. I used all of the same items in all of the bathrooms, just I think different clutter in each of the bathrooms. And of course they're not all arranged exactly the same. The hallway bathroom up here and the hallway bathroom downstairs are basically identical. I thought about copying over the room, but I didn't want them to be that identical, I guess. And then here I'm just adding another decoration to the fireplace. And then I also have um, that clock that I thought was kind of a nice one to include. And here I'm just copying over all of the items to this ensuite. So yeah, like I said, all of the bathrooms are basically identical, but that doesn't really bother me too much. I didn't really feel like for this type of build, it was that necessary to make them very different. I wanted it to be very cohesive and I feel like I feel that way with most of my bathrooms anyway. So it's probably not very different. And you will notice up in the upstairs, there's a lot of hallways. I was going to use this runner rug from Vampires and I just felt like it looked a little bit strange. I don't know, I don't use runner rugs a whole lot in my builds. I find them a little bit hard to use and that's probably just me because I definitely see other people use them and they look pretty or I see uh, like interior design shots on Pinterest and they always look really nice. but. Some, not something I normally use, but there I just put a clock and then a computer desk in the hallway. It's probably not the best spot to have a little study nook with a computer, but I felt like it made, it made the space a little bit more useful, especially since I had so many hallways in this build, but it just kind of worked out with the floor plan. And then over here you will see I have the twins kids room. Um, I love this room. I use these two beds. I really liked using this very classical furniture because I don't use it a whole lot. I was kind of thinking that the twins would be a little bit creepy if I were to create them. So maybe I will create the household and then just put them up on the gallery. That way, if you want Sims to live here, then you could, at least once my save file is released, I don't think I'll like create them right away. 
So yeah, definitely let me know what I should do, but that's what I'm thinking. I will have the house be empty, I'll put some cobwebs, and it'll be kind of haunted, but the family will be on the gallery, and then this version of the build will be on the gallery too. That way if you want it without the cobwebs, and you want the family that actually lives here, then it'll be easy to replace it. I think that'll work out pretty nicely. Yeah, I think so anyways. But here you'll see I'm just picking out decorations and toys to put around the build. I really wanted to include this Victorian dollhouse, but I just didn't really like the way it looked over there. There is plenty of space to include the dollhouse if you would like to. Maybe you could probably even just put it in the center of the room. I didn't try doing that, but there's plenty of space in here if you wanted to use the void critter thing or any other toys, I'm sure you could just put it in the middle of the room and they have plenty of space in here. Um, but they do have a little seating area over here, some school projects, they have a dresser, some stuffed animals. I get the violin in here too because I definitely thought that these kids would be into the violin. I only gave them one, so maybe only one of them plays the violin. I don't know, I didn't really think about their personalities too much or you know, try to think of exactly the characters. So I'm definitely really open, like open to hearing what you guys think about the family and what they would look like and their personalities for the kids, the teen, the parents, everything. So definitely let me know. But over here is of course the teenager's room. This room I kind of struggled with a little bit because it's a very narrow room. I was going to put the bed right here, but I felt like it was an awkward kind of flow to the room. It's probably not that big of a deal, but I decided to put the bed over here in the corner. It made it feel more like a teenager's bedroom to me. And I used some blue accents along with this pink. They don't necessarily match, but for whatever reason, I kind of liked it. And then I used gray furniture. It's a weird color scheme. I've definitely never done it before, but I think it kind of works. But of course, it's easy to change if you guys don't think it works. But for a teenager, I felt like it kind of looked nice. And then I do end up getting a, well, I have the bookcase over here. And I wanted an activity, but I decided just to put a computer desk in here. And I do end up giving them, I think, a laptop. But looking back, I was kind of thinking I probably should have gave them the journal instead of a computer. But either way, this is a fancy home. And if there is a teen in this build, or teen in this house rather, they would probably have a computer maybe. So you can get rid of it, but I put the computer desk here and I used this one that I think came from Parenthood. I loved the shape of it so much. And then I used this chair, not sure what pack that chair came with, but I thought it matched nicely. Maybe it came from Parenthood too, because it does match like perfectly. But yeah, I put that there and then I put a few items over here on the dresser. And there you may have noticed, I was thinking about moving the bed, but I decided I liked it nice and open and then I just pick out the chandeliers and then over here on this balcony I get just a few plant decorations and then I have the chess table. I didn't want to do a seating area here because I planned on doing a seating area on the lower one and seating areas are only so useful in The Sims so I felt like having another chess table was a little bit useful. You could of course put an art easel out there if you prefer your Sims to do some paintings outside but I felt like that was kind of nice. And then here on the lower one, like I said, there's the seating area and then I do the plant decoration. And then here I do an outdoor dining table. I thought this would be really nice for your Sims to be able to come out here and have like a nice like family meal out by the pool. Maybe they could have a party out here. I, I liked that idea anyways. And I was really happy to include the gazebo back here and still have room to include the monkey bars too. Cause I definitely wanted a place for kids to play. But here I am just decorating the front porch and then we are already at the end of the video. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed and hopefully you guys do enjoy the screenshots. And thank you guys so much for watching and please leave any comments or suggestions that you have and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!
Don't know why.